I was inspired to make this video after watching Greater Sapiens videos challenging the Flat Earth Society's theories. I wish to clarify and perhaps expand upon an important observation he made in the One Proof to Rule Them All video. First I'll start with a simple circle. A circle is measured as 360 degrees. That's like a pie with 360 slices. Let's say this circle represents the Earth. This is the North Pole, and the outer edge of the circle is the equator. The length of one day is 24 hours. If we divide 360 degrees by 24, we get 15 degrees. There are 24 lines, and each line is 15 degrees apart. These will be longitude lines. So these lines measure that the sun transits 15 degrees every hour. Simple math, really. This is the flat earth map Greater Sapien used in his video. As he noted, the flat earth society agrees the sun transits 15 degrees per hour. And actually, regardless of time of year, the 15 degree measurement will still work. In his video, Greater Sapien makes the assertion that this angular measurement does not work anywhere else on the map. But of course, it wouldn't. It can only be measured from the axis point. But this exposes a serious flaw in the Flat Earth theory. On the Flat Earth map, there is no South Pole. And Flat Earth proponents insist that the South Pole doesn't exist. On their map, this would actually be the South Pole. Does the angular measurement work from here? How about here? No, it does not. It can't. The Sun's 15 degree movement cannot be measured from any other place on the planet, except for the South Pole. Greater Sapien has actually proven that there must be a South Pole. This would also prove that the Earth is a rotating sphere. Remember the math for the circle? Let's add some latitude lines and apply this math to a three-dimensional globe. No matter where you stand on the globe, it will always take 24 hours for you to fully rotate. Notice how every longitude line runs from pole to pole. Notice how the latitude lines grow wider towards the equator and smaller closer to the poles. These latitude and longitude lines are actually how we measure distance across the surface of the Earth. The circumference of the Earth at the equator has been measured at 24,900 miles. If you divide that by 24, you get 1,037 and a half miles. So, every 15 degrees latitude is 1,037.5 miles. So, on this map, Africa and South America are about 4,000 miles apart on the equator, which basically matches real-world measurements. However, geometrically, the flat Earth map expands twice that distance to an enormous 49,800 mile circumference. The distance is increasing instead of decreasing as it would on a globe. At this circumference, each 15 degree increment would be 2,075 miles instead of zero. That is a tremendous mathematical discrepancy that cannot be ignored. On the flat earth map, if we measure a radius from the center of the map to 45 degrees southern latitude, it is 5,944 miles. To find the circumference, the equation is radius times 2 times pi. The circumference at this latitude is 37,350. Divide by 24, you get 1,556 miles. Multiply that by 5, and you have 7,780 miles. That's quite a distance. Since a sphere would have the map curving back towards the South Pole, 
the real distance on a spherical Earth is much less. Imagine we are looking through the Earth to the South Pole. A radius line to the same latitude is 1,981 miles. We run the calculation, take a 75 degree measurement. On planet Earth, the same 75 degree measurement is 2,593 miles. The difference between 2,593 miles and 7,780 miles is staggering it is actually three times the distance. What, distance times speed times time doesn't work in the southern hemisphere? Every traveler, whether they know it or not, uses the basic equation of speed times distance times time. If you travel at 50 miles per hour for one hour, you will go 50 miles. The math simply works, and it will always work. Literally billions of people have verified distance in the Southern Hemisphere, on both land and water. Now, I would like to address a simpler observation that doesn't need science or math. This is a 3D model of the basic Flat Earth map. Immediately, there are several obvious issues. For one, the nature of a single light source is to project a circular illumination on a flat surface. As we can see on a globe, half the Earth is in light, the other half is in shadow. The penumbra, or shadow line, matches the longitude lines exactly during the equinox. This shadow line would divide the map through the center across the entire map. The flat Earth map cannot reflect this in any way. Another issue, and maybe the most important, by the simple nature of direct line of sight, any person on the surface of a flat earth would see the sun 24 hours a day. Let's drop down onto the map. Does any living person see this? No, we do not. I assure you, Flat Earth proponents do not see this either. The Flat Earth model fails the simplest tests from every perspective. Here's some basic science for you. If your first premise is incorrect, then every theory that follows that premise is also incorrect. Give it up, you guys. A salute to Greater Sapien for taking on the Flat Earth Challenge using math, science, and logical common sense to prove this greater reality. Math never lies. The Earth is a sphere. You know we working for our rights now. Our natural God giving rights now. And everything will be alright if the people hold on tight. Come together and unite, y'all.